this video, we said that if we go to the Systems tab and click on the Duct command, here in the Properties window, we can go to Edit Type and then Edit the Fittings. We also said that we have all types of transitions over here. And if you remember, we said that we have transitions like rectangular to rectangular or round to round transitions, as well as multi shapes, which was uh, one shape to another. For example, rectangular to round, round to oval, or oval to round. Now we want to talk a little about these transitions and their angles and lengths. All right, uh, just like we've previously said that we can uh, change the radius of uh, the elbows, we also said that for the transitions we can change the angles. For example, uh, we can go to the duct command and click here, let's zoom in and click again. As the size changes, a transition will be applied. This one right here is with 45 degrees. If we had opened the properties window, we would have seen all the different angles over here as well. 15, 30, 45 or 60 degrees. Okay, now the question is, if we want to add a different angle from these, can we do that? Yes, of course we can. For example, we want a 20 degree angle. Can we add that? Let's go see how we can do it. So we go to the Systems tab and click on the Duct Fitting command. And then we open this drawer and in the search box, we're going to type in transition and search it. And then every family which has the word transition in it will be listed in here. So we're going to look for the one that we want. Rectangular and these four angles that you can see. Let's select one of them. And now edit type. And then duplicate. And rename it to 20 degree and click OK. And then this angle multiplier right here, we're going to change it to 20. And click OK. So now, besides the angles that we already had, 30, 45, this 20 degree angle has also been added to the list. So now we can select this transition and set it on 20 degree. But still we um, choose to select the 45, standard 25 degree angle for our projects. But in case an exception occurs, uh, we can go ahead and uh, add a new angle. But there's no need that uh, you select each and every one of your transitions and uh, select a different angle for it. For example, a 21 degree angle or 35.5 degree. There's no need for all that trouble. You can just apply 45 degrees to all of them. But in case you ever need that change of angle, now you know how you can do it. So now if we go to the insert tab and then click on load family, let's go back a folder and then go into the transitions folder. Then we have all of these families available for our transitions. And this is the one that we were using earlier. Rectangular transition angle, which means that this transition is working by angle. And we have another rectangular transition length. So let's load and open this one. Let's go to the duct command through systems tab and duct command. And using that same fitting that we had, let's go to edit type and edit. Now we want to say that from now on, if a transition were to be applied, we would want this transition, which is called length to be used. We want this transition to be by length, not angle. In other words, the parameter for this transition, uh, we want it to be length, not angle. Now, before we confirm and click OK, let me tell you something. You see, in fact, we are editing uh, this duct type. So this change that we've just made will be applied to all the future ducts that we are drawing. As in, from now on, if I draw a duct and a transition were to be applied, the family for that transition would be this length family. 
What about the previous one? Will those be changed? No, nothing will happen to the previous ducts. Those will remain as we drew them and this change will be applied to the future ducts. You will see that. Let's close these windows. And you see this is still the same. Let me press escape. You see this one uh, is still in angle. But let's draw the next one. Let's use the shortcut DT and draw a duct with 1000 by 800 and then change the size to 800 now. Now click and escape. You see now it says that this family is length. This is a transition by length. And this family right here, this one's by angle. But nothing happens to this one, only the new ducts will be changed. So now what do we mean by length? Earlier, if I wanted to change the angle of this transition, I could have gone here and if I didn't see the angle that I'm looking for, I could have gone to edit type and duplicate it and add a new angle. But what about this one? Let's go to its edit type for a sec. You see, we don't have a parameter here. We had angle there, but here we have nothing. So for this family, the parameter which indicates the length is right over here in the properties window and here duct length. This one's 375. Let's measure this real quick. We're going to go to align dimension and select from this line to this one. It says 375. Now let's select it and then change it to 500. You see the length increased. Now we're going to set it on a thousand and it got even longer. So this is a family uh, which its parameter is length, which means that it changes by length. And we had nothing like an angle to change, but this one's by angle. And if you remember previously, we said that if we change the angle, so will the length or vice versa. But this one has separated them from each other. You can control one of them only by angle or the other only by length. So now we're going to draw another duct. We're going to press DT. And then we enter 1800, click, and click again. And the rest of it, we want it to be 800 by 800. Now click and escape. But what just happened? We already said that the length would be 1000. So why was this one drawn with 375? You see, if you recall, we said that we changed this one's angle by going to edit type and changing the angle right here. But we changed this one's length through the properties window. So the size of the parameters can be changed from uh, two different places. So if there's a parameter which can be changed through the properties window, then that change will only be applied to that one duct that you're drawing. Only that one. So this one's family type is rectangular transition length and this one's type is rectangular transition length. So they both have the same families but because this uh, length parameter was in the properties window, it can be different for each of them. As in, I can change this one to 400, for example. And let's also measure it real quick to make sure. Click, click, and blank space, click again. This one can be 400, this one can be 1000. We can also have another one with a different length. But this angle right here, Actually, let's take this one and get a copy from it. We're going to drag to select it and click on copy and then click and click again and now escape. This one is the rectangular transition 20 degree angle family and this one is also the same thing. Now, if we go to edit type, for example, set this angle on 22. Or a bigger number, for example, 25. Just remember, this is a wrong thing to do. I just want you to see the result. Up here in the name, we put 20 and in the angle, 25. You see, it's all wrong. We just want to see what will happen. And only this one is selected and having these changes. 
Now we click OK and both of them changed. So let's measure them, annotate, angular. Now click and click in a blank space. Sorry, I clicked on a line. Let's do it again. Click, click and over here, let's zoom in a bit. And there we go. Now this one, click and click. Now let me zoom in a bit, click right here and escape. Let's check it out again. I'm going to select one of them. Now edit type and set this on 22 and OK. You see both of them changed again. So if any parameter is an edit type, it will change all of the items that uh, have that same family name. But if a parameter uh, were in properties window, its changes will only apply to what you have selected. So the parameter types are different. But as we go further and talk more about the modeling in the modeling space and you will become more familiar with how these parameters work. But first, let me tell you their names so you remember. For example, these parameters which are shown in the properties window and are different for each family. Those are called instance and the ones that you can find in edit type and which are applied to all of the families. We call those type. So we have type parameters and instance parameters. Okay, so now one more time we're going to go to the systems tab and click on duct and then go to edit type and edit. You remember we had some fittings here, right? We had a fitting transition which was rectangular to oval length. I only just explained this one, but uh, it applies to this one as well, as in the transition is by length, not angle. So that's that. You remember if we went to the insert tab and click on insert load family, we could see some other transition types as well. If you look at this image, you can see all the different types of transitions. We have transition angle and transition length, which you just saw. They look the same by appearance, but one is controlled by length and the other by angle. Now, we also have four other different types, which you can also see what they look like. We have eccentric, which isn't necessarily symmetrical, and straight. And if you look closely, you can see we have two straight small angles right here. And that's actually why this word straight is included in the name. This one has a direct line, but this one's dragged a bit further and has an angle and continues. And as for this one, transition Z, this one actually indicates this rectangle right here. We have these both ends with a rectangle in between. It doesn't have an angle like this one. And the last one that we have is transition OG which has a slight S shape to it. As you can see right here, it's a bit round. It's not like this one with a sharp angle. So depending on your plan and the design that you're given, you can use any of these families that you have in Revit.